Hello everyone, welcome to the next podcast. It's called Architecting Success, the Gabo Shulok story, navigating the convergence of IT strategy and business innovation. Gabo, how are you? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. How about you? Well, fine, thank you. Could you walk us through your career journey, highlighting how you transitioned between roles and industries to become an enterprise architect? Yes, of course. Uh, so I started in a generic uh, system engineering IT consulting position, delivering end-to-end -end solution for a big US-based uh, energy group called ITRAN. So I really enjoyed working in a multinational international environment that was a great foundation for me however um, i started to feel an increased passion for seeing the strategic impact of it and technologies on business so because i came from it and i wanted to know the other side the business because everything starts with business with the business vision business strategy even if it's not written so for me, each role transition added a new perspective, uh, different industries, local specialties, etc. And then I ended up in a role of enterprise architect. So first I was employed and then I created my consulting company. But, but I wanted to highlight that it's no matter what's your past, business, IT, or specific industry, you can become an enterprise architect or more importantly, you can have a mindset to oversee a whole enterprise at a strategic level. Thank you. So what motivated your move from a system engineer and IT consultant at ITRON to taking on more strategic roles such as the lead IT expert and eventually an enterprise architect? Yes, yeah, so in my previous role, I felt myself in silo a little bit powerless for the company. So I thought I could make more minor impact on the whole organizations because I could see massive projects, programs, digital transformation around me, but I was not really able to participate effectively. So I was driven to make more comprehensive border impact beyond the technical or solution delivery rules I have done before. But but I think it's 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 also very important to learn the difference between these architecture roles, the enterprise solution and software architecture roles, because these are slightly different. So enterprise architecture management aligns business and IT at the enterprise uh, high level, includes several activities based on um, the organizational requirement. And also a enterprise architect is a cross industrial and cross functional uh, role. It's similar to the project manager. So it's beneficial to have um, an industry domain, but until now I've worked in uh, energy, utility, telco, finance, insurance, healthcare, automotive industry, even in meat industry as a vegetarian. <laughs> Yes. So um, reflecting on your vast experience across different organizations, how have the challenges and opportunities in enterprise architecture evolved over the years? Yeah, fortunately, it changed a lot. Before, it was more like smart people sitting in the ivory tower and directing the organization of what was and what was not allowed. So it was more technical, IT-driven, so massive, which is why the ERO was usually unsuccessful and not popular for many companies. So nowadays, EA is becoming more business driven, more like a consultant role. So we need to understand business and IT leaders at sea level, their pain points, their concerns, the goals and tailoring activities based on this. So the best example uh, most people will understand what's happening in the EA world. It's like the agile transformation mm -hmm. in the software development. It was started 20 years ago, but it's still ongoing. You still need to train organization people. So something similar should happen with the EA role. It was already started with the business-driven enterprise architecture like 10 years ago. 
far, we need to accelerate it further. Fantastic. So can you share insights into your decision to establish BDAT Solutions Limited and what gaps you aim to fill in the market with your consultancy? Yeah, uh, I needed to decide. I would uh, do this job alone as an independent consultant or would uh, do in a team and share the knowledge, create a network for a wider audience. So I created a small internal team making partnerships worldwide, just like in the UK, we have very nice consulting and product uh, partners, creating a network and most importantly, evangelize modern EA activities and mindset for people and for businesses. So, you know, we are just a tiny fish in the ocean, but, but it's still important that organizations and consulting companies now realize the benefit of adopting and using modern EA practices. So um, as an organization, we can help them providing guidance, methodology, advice, and of course, consultants um, achieving their business goals and uh, help with, uh, with, uh, with them with the help of, um, of enterprise architecture. But, uh, but as I mentioned you, we have beautiful partnerships, consulting companies, tool providers, and I hope we can build a great community together. And uh, Tim, I also wanted to mention you then. I know that the EA is inside you because I seen that you have shared business capabilities, uh, strategic solution selection on LinkedIn. So that's great example what we call enterprise architecture. Thank you. So during your career, you mostly worked with large corporations. How did the work affect you at the startups or SMEs? Yeah, it is currently mainly for a privilege of large companies to employ an EA or contract with enterprise consultants. Uh, probably we don't know the reason, but they're always positioned as, a, as an extra. So they consider it was expensive because the, the pay grade, the daily rates are, are higher than the average. And it was positioned as a complex, big piece of work, which is usually true. But um, a great experience uh, for me working with a startup that uh, they were starting uh, to transform to enterprise. So for example, for them, they needed to create organizational structure, governance, policy and their IT ecosystem became increasingly complex. So we could help them uh, with the largest program, um, integrate with one of the most strictly industrial partners in the manufacturing. And there was generated a lot of change uh, inside this uh, company. So for me, it was all motivated to create a way of proportion for startups and small, medium sized businesses so they can borrow EA, they can get flexible resources, focus on a scope which creates the most value for them. So we would introduce EA step by step for this company and create like a more sure. major practice together. Yeah. yeah. So you have worked in multiple countries, including Hungary, Germany and the Netherlands. How do you adapt your approach to enterprise architecture across different cultures and business environments? Yeah, so we are living in globalism. So here inside Europe, I see not a lot of uh, differences or cultural related challenges. Maybe the maturity of the practice is a bit uh, more increased in Western Europe. Hmm. Culturally, I, I, I feel the biggest problem is the lack of involvement of women which is probably oh, yeah. true for the whole IT industry, sure, sure. but especially here in this ivory tower affected EA environment that's highly um, uh, affected. Um, so the profession of EA needs to be promoted correctly to women. That's uh, what I really think, uh, especially because I could see many women colleagues becoming great EA in, yeah. in a very short, one, two years of period, they could convert it from business, from IT related roles. So my future friend 
really includes to promoting more gender diversity in architectural management. Thank you. So your profile mentions a strong focus on aligning business goals with IT strategies. Can you provide an example of a project where this alignment dramatically impacted business outcomes? Yeah, so often we put a lot of effort into our daily jobs, including assessing the current state of architecture, engaging with business, understanding business strategy, creating future state uh, with the roadmap. So we can use these outcomes for planning projects, right time, right ways, using the right technologies, using resources better and many more. But here is one very specific example, uh, what is the benefit of adapting EA mindset and working with EA. So once we figure out that one company group uses one specific capability, still both solutions they were using, both data they were using multiple times. There was around uh, about a, a topography map solution. So once we optimize the portfolio within the group, uh, and the licenses, we could save instantly 1.5 million euros. Oh. And it was like within two, three months uh, of work. So sometimes we can cherry pick and create outstanding uh, results by connected the right people um, around the specific area that sounds familiar for you, yeah. Tim, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. So given your extensive experience uh, and certification and continuous professional development, how important do you believe ongoing education and certification are in the field of IT and enterprise architecture? Yeah, so uh, for me, certifications confirm that I know a topic at the desired level. So they are beneficial sometimes, sometimes required by customers, by companies. But what I really think that the word transforming uh, learning smaller chunks, but more frequently than before. So because of the pace of change of new technology, solution, methodologies, business models, so many changes around us. So in the world of EA, we need to know about the industry we are working in, generic business models, business capabilities, processes, different methodologies, um, not just in the field of EA, but like IT service management, ITIL, project management, PIMBA, PRINCE2, yes. agile practices, uh, COVID for IT governance, security, etc. But the good news is we don't need to have a hands-on knowledge, but more like a broader, high-level uh, knowledge of these uh, um, uh, methodologies. Fantastic. So reflecting on your volunteer experience as a project management mentor, what have been the most rewarding aspects of mentoring emerging talents in science and technology? Yes, yeah, so sometimes people just need insight into how they work and what they do in real life. So it can be applied to different roles. Um, PMI Hungarian chapter has a program they repeat yearly where seniors and juniors can be connected together in sharing knowledge, experience, as well as supporting their effort for juniors developing themselves or supporting their project. So that would be great creating something similar in the world of EA. So I'm going to work on it in the future. Fabulous. So finally, looking to the future, how do you see the role of enterprise architects evolving with the advent of new technologies such as AI, blockchain and IoT? Yeah, we have many things to do, such as with AI, which is game changer. So it will affect many parts of our life, our work. In practice, it means that we need to change the way we work and there will be affected the whole enterprise, the whole enterprise architecture, then we need to plan properly. So in addition, these technologies, especially AI, can support our work, can help handling large amount of data, can create architecture 
can make recommendation. Uh, so I see a lot of uh, a lot of change in the near future. Um, also with new technologies or new generation uh, solution, just like yeah. SAP S for HANA, we need to support properly um, um, in as an as an EA. So also we need to stay up to date with these technologies, so we can support organizations creating the vision, the roadmap, uh, which is feasible and create the most value for enterprise. That's why it's essential to use proper EA practices. Ah, oh, fabulous. Thank you so much, Gabor. It's been insightful, educational, and definitely we will do something in the future again. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Thank you.